in ovarian cancer, we started a few years ago looking at, as the pd one pd one inhibitors and the CTLA-4 inhibitors, excuse me, uh, CTLA-4 inhibitors were coming into the, uh, the mainstream in a lot of other cancers. Obviously, many companies are very interested in looking at them in ovarian cancer. And so we looked at a number of different agents that target the pd one pd one axis, as well as CTLA-4 uh, single agents. And the activity across the board is somewhere in the 10 to 15% response rate, uh, which is not bad, but nowhere near as good as we would like it to be. And I think if we hold our high bar as the response rates that we see in something like melanoma, it was not as good as we wanted it to be. And so I think uh, looking back, while it was a, another good drug in the armamentarium we have, it would be nice if we could increase the response rates, and especially those patients that can have complete responses and long responses. And so the next step is how do we make them better? And you can do that by either trying to identify the patients that respond really well or try to add things to them to increase the response rates. And sometimes the easiest thing to do is to add other drugs to the immune therapies to try to make them work a little bit better, whether that's a chemotherapy or a targeted therapy. And, and in fact, when we've added chemotherapy to immune therapy, we seem to get a little better response in some cases, in some cases not so much. Um, and in the upfront setting, the current trend is to try to look at what we can do not only to add to current upfront chemotherapy, but also to maintenance chemotherapy or maintenance targeted therapy to try to increase the response rates and increase the number of people who don't have their cancers come back.